Welcome, Welcome to, to Shade and the, and the City. I'm your girl, Treese. It's Nels. And today we are going to get into our review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 5, Episode 10. So Shade Squad, welcome back. And new viewers, welcome, welcome. If you have not already, please hit that like button. And that subscribe button. And y'all, let's get into it. Let's get shady. There were some really cute parts, but this was super hard for me um, to watch. So I won't tell y'all too much. I'm sure if you've already watched it, you know, you've cried. Um, and we'll try not to do it again on camera. So let's get into it and let's get shady. Yes, I need to get my nails done. So guys, we are jumping back into Mel, addressing the situation um, at Madani and how she did speak to Destiny. And, you know, Destiny obviously said she didn't hear her say hello, um, although that's what she said. Now, Destiny claims that she didn't hear anything and Mel tells her she said hello to her and Kimmy by name. Now, of course, we're going to run back the tapes and there's evidence. Mel's well, right we, knew, we knew when it happened. Right. Now, Stormy asked if Destiny, in knowing that, um, does it change how you feel? And she's like, no. Destiny asked Kimmy if she heard it, and she admits that she did. Kimmy tries to tell her that she probably didn't hear it or receive it because of her attitude. She reminds her of how her and Tisha were trying to have a conversation with her about her attitude as well. And Destiny was being, she was on 10. Remember, she was on 10. So Destiny feels she was calm and collected. Her cousin Demi chimes in, which I can appreciate. Um, and she was actually there and says that she believes that Destiny thought she was being violated because she had the prior situation with Mel and Stormy. Uh, Destiny does agree. And then Demi says she was shocked that they showed up at her event. Um, and when she didn't hear Mel, it kind of just, it made her feel some type of way. So... She said that, you know, when she saw her, she would have been upset too, uh, but Destiny exploded. Now, Destiny believes she exploded inside. I said, Destiny, said, That's even, I know, even I know that I can't control my face. I think you have to be a little bit more self-aware. Because even I know that. Even when I'm really trying hard, it shows all over my face, like, my face. <laughs> uh, Tisha lets her know, no, boo-boo. It's written no, no, no. I was thinking the same thing. You don't have to say a word. Okay? I'm really aging myself. Anyway, so Destiny said she didn't express it. And Tisha said her body language spoke values. Um, okay, and then Stormy asked the ladies, based off what she heard, are they cool or not? Yeah, she's like, this is a good step and a good step forward. Are, you, are we cool now? The awkward silence. And Mel okay. kind of laughs. And she says she thinks it's crazy that people can't normalize people being okay with how people feel. I agree with her with this. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie either. She said it's okay to have certain relationships with people. It's okay to cut people off. And it's okay for two people to not basically be besties and still be able to respect each other in the same mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. Destiny completely agrees with her and they actually do a cheers with Mel's empty glass um, and Mel says that she's okay with Destiny feeling how she well she says in confessional that she's okay with Destiny feeling how she feels as long as she's not taking it out on her now she thinks Destiny is good and you know with where they are as well and she's fine with where they are and everybody else around them needs to be fine uh, Kimmy questions if they're all fixed and Stormy says, we're definitely fixed. We're fixed. So Destiny says, she doesn't know about that, Storm Storm Yanla. I love that. I thought that was cute. Um, but she Storm did a Liana. Job. Storm Yanla, yeah. <laughs> but Stormy did do a, a beautiful job. So hats off to her. 
Um, and then she gives all the ladies with canvas girl beauty bags. Those are some big, big bags. Right. And it was full of canvas beauty products. And she said, they always make me happy. I'm I'm just trying to give the gift that keeps on giving. Destiny was certainly happy. Yes, Destiny was certainly happy. Now, you can get into Mel and Kimmy. Yes. Yeah, so um, Kimmy and Mel ended up walking out at the same time. And Mel asked her if everything was okay, because we know what Mel said previously, you know, she's seen her getting a little teary eyed and now it's not like Kimmy because, you know, Kimmy right. don't show no emotion really. So Kimmy told her that, you know, she has a lot going on, but she's going to be okay, but she's just not quite ready to share, but tells her that she does appreciate her asking. Um, So, you know, Melody respects that and she, she, I guess she's just, she gonna wait by the phone. Right. Um now Marceau, okay, out here setting up some nice little indoor date nights, little indoor picnics. It what do you call it? A car cute. a rug a carpet picnic. Is that what he called it? Yeah, carpet Something picnic. Something like that. It was beautiful. I ain't gonna lie. It was super cute. I it love you. Nice. Know I'm a big he romantic. Said, he said he was he said he's a romantic. It's, see, I'm I'm good with that as long as you ain't romancing nobody else but me. Okay, that it. part. Now, Tisha, she is super impressed by this beautiful gesture. Um, he told her that he wants to be a better dude for her, and that's what she deserves. So she asked, um, if you Can know, we talk she, about how he didn't know where his kids were. Huh? I thought he said the kids ain't in the house. He said the kids aren't in the house, and I don't know where they are. But that's Tisha's department. That's not his. That's exactly what he said. I mean, he's like, I'm not going to deal with that stress. Right. I deal with other you stresses. You deal with that. I did this. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to deal with other stresses. Okay. As long as you know they good, we know they good. Okay? okay. So she asked if we can credit, you know, some of this to the couples retreat. And he said whether he thinks something's wrong or not, um, it doesn't matter. She thinks something's wrong. And, you know, he wants to pay attention to that. Right. And says he would hate for her to go through this time and not know how much he loves her. I mean, it could have probably helped that when y'all were in Vegas, you would have stood up in front of everybody and expressed how much you love her. You know, when she wanted to renew those vows. Mm, I mean, good points, Nels. Good that point. definitely could have helped. I mean, because you would have told her and everybody else and you probably wouldn't have to do all this shit now. But, you know, it's okay. We're evolving. We're evolving. We're growing and glowing. Um, so she told Look, him, you know, clearly she don't let shit go, y'all, because I didn't even remember that. But damn, I remember. I, was, I, I thought that was embarrassing. I thought that was super embarrassing. Mm -hmm. You did a surprise uh, vow renewal with all your friends there, and you don't want to stand up and express your love for me and do the no, sir. Yeah, it would have been done. Dada. Okay. You know, she tells him that sometimes he just talks. Um, but it shows that, you know, this like the show that he's actually listening and their communication is improving and says it makes her think about how beneficial the couple retreat was for everyone. She likes that they got to know, you know, more about uh, Lewis and Tiffany and says that um, I'm sorry, Marceau says that he felt like Dr. Francis was a little hard on Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, Tisha reminds him that he was he was kind of hard on both of them. And Marcel says he ain't see that. But he, he feels, feels like that Dr. Francis, Dr. Francis biased, is incredibly though. biased to men specifically. Um, and says no one can have anything to say. Like he was the only person that was right and with all the answers. Well, I mean, he is the professional. I mean, he did go to school. He did. He did. You know, that's not either here nor there. He got the um, and then the confessional Marceau says that he believes Dr. Francis has a bias against men with like all masculinity is toxic and he doesn't agree with that apparently he wants a new therapist and um he said he can see he he wants he wants someone that uh how do he explain it like um he can see them like living their life he doesn't want a perfect person right he therapist. wants somebody that it's like oh you messed up in your life too but you're he wants you're to see their good and their bad and right. um you know basically giving advice through their own experiences um and um 
Tisha's down. She's like, whatever I got to do to make this nigga keep on going to therapy, that's what okay. we're going to do. I like I'm Dr. Sure. Francis, but sir, if he ain't with you, if he ain't with somebody else to go, then guess what? That's what we're going to do. So Tisha says, um, you know, being that we're on this whole growing and learning journey, she lets him know that she plans to have a period party because one of their girls are of the age where, you know, they're going to start their cycle soon. Marceau was so disappointed. He was like, oh, my no, baby, not Macy. Macy, no, no, don't do it. So, you know, teacher says that some girls get embarrassed by it, but every woman's going to go through it. It's something that needs to be celebrated and embraced. And this particular company gives educational tips and advice and makes it fun. Feel that it would be great. And she wants, you know, little brown girls to know that it's okay and invite more little girls to these type of events. Right. So Marcel asks, you know, are the dads supposed to be going there? Like, are they supposed to be a part of this? And she says, you know, it's more like mothers and daughters only. Um, but then she's like, you know what? If you want to come, you should come. Yeah. Because he's, he's like, you know, he's like, well, that's sexist. He's like, but I'll accept it. I was like, this manipulating ass. She's like, okay, right. well, you know, you know what? Maybe you should. You know what you I mean? You do have two daughters. And you know what, Martel too, you know, and Destiny was raised by her dad. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, God forbid something happened. And, you know, he they said got he'd divorced. be married next week. Yeah. She was like, sir, if you don't want this drink in your motherfucking face. And look, he tells her, look, if something happened to me, you better go out and find you a baller. She said, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live my single best life spending that insurance money. And he said, don't be out here a 40-year-old dot. Why not? I was Let's go! I was faithful to your ass for all this goddamn time. See what the fuck right. you got me. The hell? So it's the day of Kimmy's biopsy, and they're headed um, to get uh, two areas uh, biopsied um, of her lumps and um, to find out whether they're cancerous or not. Kimmy says mentally she's trying to stay in the best place possible. But the reality is, you know, this could be cancer in both places. And um, it's tough. It's tough to deal with. Kimmy says, best case scenario, she would, she should know her results by tomorrow. And, but, you know, she's, she's thinking positive. Okay. She Kimmy is happy does. with how swiftly they've moved through forward in the process of moving mm -hmm. things forward and once they caught something, she said all of this, this testing and all of this stuff has happened in a matter of days where to us, it probably feels like weeks, mm -hmm. um, but for her, it's actually been days. So that actually is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. um, Maurice is concerned that they won't let him in, but Kimmy says, you know, she'll be okay. Um, and, you know, she appreciates him coming. But she says in her mind, she's thinking of it as like a regular mammogram. And if she's inviting all these people to come, you know, it's kind of like a negative connotation in her mind. And he was like, oh, okay, well, you know, if it's like a regular thing, like a regular day, well, maybe you can cook tonight. Mm. <laughs> Maurice. <laughs> and she's like, um, no, I am getting doted on for the next 24 hours until, you know, my results come back and my brain stops running a mile a minute. Of course he agrees. He's like, whatever the fuck I got to do. I'm right. going to wait on you hand and foot. I don't give a goddamn how long it is. Take me, I'm yours. Okay. He does agree he's going to take over everything. And in the confessional, Kimmy said, you know, she's a firm believer that Jesus takes care of her personally and everything happens for a reason. Um, we whether agree we agree it or, or not. It. Huh? Yeah. She's like, whether Ooh, we agree she had me. or Ooh. not, we may not understand it, but everything happens for a reason. And she's accepting that. Um, and before heading inside um, for their appointment, they sit in the car and pray together. Oh, that was rough for me, y'all. I was just, whew. I always say we may not understand it, y'all, but it, it never seems fair. Mm -hmm. So then we see Destiny at her photo shoot on for her single on Tina. Now she's invited Mel, and Mel comes in giving compliments. Destiny questions whether she looks like Big Bird. And Mel said she loves the yellow and she's done the yellow with feathers. So she's on the big bird train too. I loved it. I thought, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I told Nels, 
Kimmy's scenes were not the only scenes that almost made me cry. Actually, mm -hmm. this scene almost brought me to tears because as I was telling Nels, I can't imagine just like, I'm like trying to like plead with you. Like, no, I want to be friends again. I want to talk to you every day again. Like I want to like, and which is just like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. But if I see you at the cookout, I'll say, hey. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah. Production asked her how she's feeling that Mel showed up and she said she's not sure. Um, the only thing I didn't like was when she said she wasn't sure because she made it seem like Mel kind of low-key just popped up. Popped up. And yeah. you, know, you definitely invited her. So then Mel is trying to give her poses and, you know, she's like, uh, and she's like, oh, so now because your little booty didn't grow, you want to pop it out. And they're they're having playful banter. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's almost like normal destiny Mel again. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it, it pulled at my heartstrings. So I was like, damn, I too remember when it was like this. Um, and so Mel starts directing destiny to pop her leg out because she bow legged. And again, they have a playful time. They take a break to sit down and talk. And Destiny thanks her for coming out and Mel thanks her for inviting her. So then she tells her she was nervous when she left Stormy's because Mel knows she can't drive. And Mel admits that that's true. I was like, well, uh. the first step is admitting. Um, so Destiny said, you know, but she's glad she made it home and made it there to support her. Mel says that, you know, she made a video posting Destiny's song, but with everything that happened at Madani, that kind of derailed the event from ever happening. She explains her side of what happened and what went down um, at Madani. And Destiny asked Mel how she felt when she didn't speak back to her. And Mel says she didn't, she felt she didn't want to be bothered. So she wasn't going to bother her. I said, that's definitely Scorpio energy. Um, <laughs> Destiny feels like the hello wasn't sufficient clearly when the last time I saw you chairs were thrown. So she feels like the fact that she didn't expect Tisha to show up um, and, you know, display grace, why would she do the same to her? And, you know, basically Destiny questions why they're in the place that they're in now. Mel says she feels like they've talked about that. Mel, shut that down real quick. We're not going to go over that again. I told you, I said what I said. Now, um, she says she's made peace with whatever's happened last year. And she's good over here. So Destiny asks, well, how can you make peace with assassinating your friend's character? And Mel says, well, that's what you did. It brings up how I'm like, this is so taking a turn for the worse. Right. And Destiny uh, brings up how you know, she called her a manipulator and a liar. Or no, Mel said, oh yeah, Destiny Mel. called Mel a manipulator mm -hmm. and a liar. And although Destiny denies it, Destiny said, but you for sure called me a liar at the cafe and goes back into her explanation of what she said. They run back the tapes and Destiny indeed said it. Now Destiny says to be clear when I said that, but you didn't say it, but anyway, oh. when I said that, it had everything to do with the situation. And Mel says that you had a conversation with everybody about it. And Destiny says she texts her asking, what's going on? Why is everybody saying we have an issue? And Mel mm -hmm. says, but um, because we hadn't had a conversation, you went to assume that I'm a master manipulator. I said. What got me was Destiny was like, okay, but I text you. And did you respond? And Mel's like, no. And she's like, well, then, like, how was we supposed to have a conversation if you weren't even responding to me? That part. But your your excuses, but we didn't have a conversation. Who I tried. And then, so then Destiny brings up how she's had to find out from other people that Mel had an issue with her. Destiny bring, uh, bring, it also brings up how somebody told her, basically, the business situation that they talked about the cafe, and apparently... There was some business that she was supposed to be doing with somebody, but once she fell out with Mel, or I guess once they talked to Mel, they were like, nah, I'm good. Um, and Mel tells her she wants to rehash all this stuff and she didn't come for that. So she said, you know, she didn't come to go back and forth and she ain't got no desire to keep beating a dead horse. Now in confessional, 
she said that she doesn't agree with Destiny's version of what happened at the coffee shop, but she's ready to move forward and lead the past in the past. She said they agreed at the peace party. They don't have to be friends, but they should show respect. And Mel says, even if she sees her out, she wouldn't just turn her head. She would greet her. And Destiny says, well, that would be childish and doesn't expect her to do that. And Mel said, well, it's not about childish. And some people's boundaries are different. She says some people would prefer to not speak to someone they don't fool with. That's people. Yeah. And it's their choice. She said for her, if she saw her out, she could speak and she ain't doing no drama and peace is what it is for her. She thinks they're doing great being able to sit in the same space together and they should not be able to. And Destiny is like, you love me, don't you? <laughs> and Mel hesitates and then they run back this whole montage of you know their friendship and mel says you know of course she does and she misses the friendship that they had but she's in a place where she is enjoying being by herself but believes those times with destiny are memories i said god damn Des mel you make the shit so final uh destiny talks about going through a divorce at the same time and feeling like she was divorcing mel as well she says that she feels like they'll always be etched in each other's hearts because they went through something so traumatic together. She lets her know, regardless of her relationship with Martel, her and Mel rocked hard. Destiny says in her confessional that it's sad her and Mel will probably never be friends again. She feels like it's like Thelma and Louise minus the cliff die. And she's referring more to the loyalty. And she said, but like they said at the peace party, they can be in a room together. Um, and Destiny just feels it's unfortunate. And like I said, this pulled in my heartstrings, y'all. I was like, Mel just really ain't here for it. She's it, and I guess Nell's had her explanation from Mel's side of why she's not trying to do that again. Um, because Destiny, at the end of the day, her loyalty is more to Martel than it is to Mel. So, yeah, there you have it. So. Now we move on to the period party with uh, Macy and her friends. Um, Tisha lets the girls know that they're going to talk about the importance of their girly parts, their cycle, um, because, you know, as females, they're all going to experience that. So the ladies had them say some affirmations, taught them about hormones, diet, peer, period poverty, which two young twin girls created a company around that concept to help with the lack of menstrual products um, and menstrual education, which I thought was super dope. Oh. These little girls look like they're like 13, 14 or something. Like, right. um, So, you know, they also passed out a huge bag full of goodies, you know, menstrual period products. Um, they also did a Q&A where the girls were to write down a question that, you know, they weren't 100% comfortable asking out loud. Um, but they were to be answered. Um, right. But in the midst of this, Maurice um, comes inside, um, you know, which has Tisha concerned because she's like, hold up, there ain't supposed to be no dudes here. Like, what are you right. doing here? And she doesn't know what's so important that would bring him here. So they go outside and Kimmy's there. Um, and basically, Kimmy let her know that, you know, she tried to, um, get in touch with her and Marceau, um, but, you know, she tried to reach out over the phone or whatever to, you know, get them together, and she didn't get a response, which <sighs> I felt like, Tisha, didn't you say something about that last time? Weren't you feeling some type of way, boo? Okay. Right, right. But, you know. You pulling out all the old. I, yeah, I mean, you know. You don't let shit go. Dang. You motherfucking right. Okay, and you know I like me some Kimmy, Okay. So basically, you know, she lets her know that she has some bad news. Um, she tells Tisha that last week while she was watching the game. Um, is that what it says? Uh, yeah, what? And, and her and Mar uh, Maurice. So basically he was. Well, OK, what they do while they watch the game is they business. She basically found out that she had uh, lumps in her breast and Tisha immediately gets emotional and embraces her. She tells her that they did a bunch of tests and, um, you know, it did come back cancerous. She says on June 22nd, her test came back positive for triple negative 
uh, breast cancer, which is the most aggressive form of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And she says, because they were able to catch it pretty early, her prognosis is pretty good, but their journey has begun. When I tell you, I was so emotional. It was hard. Please listen, my notes could be messed. They usually are anyways, but I was not even able to speak. Okay. She was too son to speak. Like mm -hmm. I was so emotional that I couldn't even talk my notes into my phone. Um, Tisha tells Kimmy, whatever she needs, um, you know, she wants to be there for her. She knows that she's probably going to have to pop up because Kimmy's not going to call her when she tried, you didn't answer the phone anyway, but that's neither here nor there. She wants to go through it with her. Now, <sighs> says, even though, I, what I thought was pretty dope is, even though Kimmy is going through what she's going through, you know, her mind is all over the place. She still thought of Macy. She right. went, got her this cute little pink pouch to put her, you know, little menstrual products in so that, you know, nobody knows that that's what she's going through or can see or whatever. And I thought, it, I, I just thought it was dope. Like, you know, cause you could easily just take the excuse and be like, you know, I've got some real life shit going on, but it was a cute little pouch that, you know, you know, she got for her. Well, in yeah. the, um, so in the confession, in the confessional, Tisha says this is very near and dear to her heart because she lost an aunt to breast cancer and she hates that Kimmy is going through this. And there's something, it's something that you're just never prepared for. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they part ways, you know, Tisha goes back in. Of course, she's still emotional. Um, yeah, that was, that was a super sad scene. Super duper sad scene. Did you have anything you wanted to add, Tris? No, no, no. Um, I cried. No. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't do a first reaction to this because. But uh, prayers up for Kimmy. Yes, definitely. More than anything, um, I actually saw today um, when I was scrolling through Shade in the City that uh, Maurice was sharing um, just her going through the chemotherapy and she's still being Kimmy up working. And she was so cute. Right. Look, everybody got their mask on. I was like, there go Kimmy right there. That's right. Kimmy right there. <laughs> so, yeah, no. Um, yeah, prayers up for Kimmy. I just, I, I, I really am praying for the best. And um, yeah, y'all, like they say, prayer and numbers. And I ain't trying to get too spiritual on y'all, but I definitely believe that. And uh, Kimmy definitely needs needs them right now. So definitely yeah. put them up for her. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much. Sorry to end up such a somber you. note. That's just the way that they did it. But thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. Please make sure if you have not already that you hit that like button. You comment. You subscribe. And you hit the notification bell. And make sure that you're following us on all the platforms because I see us going with Instagram, the Twitter, the Facebook. And we really appreciate it, y'all. We really, really do. Um, and we love it. We love it. And we want to keep growing, keep glowing. And yeah, so... We will catch you guys. I don't even know if it's going to come on next week because of Thanksgiving. Or mm. Well, no, it'll come on this week. It won't come on the following week, probably. It'll mm -hmm. probably take a break. I don't know. We'll see. We'll let y'all know, but we'll catch y'all for the next episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville next week. Love you. Have a good night. Good night. Bye.